Hello my dear students in this lecture i will discuss about the topic vasa previa the word vasa previa actually derived from the latin word that is vasa means the vessels that are fetal blood vessels and pre means before via means way in other words fetal blood vessels lie before the fetus in the birth canal as you can see in this diagram these are the fetal blood vessels which are present before the fetus in the birth canal these are fetal blood vessels and this is the umbilical cord umbilical cord contains the fetal blood vessels which are protected by the watson jelly this is actually the gelatinous substance which protects the fetal blood vessels from the rupture but here the watson jelly is not present so these blood vessels actually prone or actually at the risk of rupture its definition is vasa previa is the term used when the fetal blood vessels lies over the internal os of the cervix in front of the presenting part this is the internal os of the cervix and this is the external os of the cervix so fetal blood vessels are present over the internal os of the cervix plus in front of the presenting part and here the presenting part is head head of the fetus next is the incidence of vasa previa which is actually very rare that is 1 in 2000 pregnancies its incidence rate is rare but it is a very serious cause of vaginal bleeding as these fetal blood vessels are at risk of rupture and that might lead to bleeding next are the risk factors of the vasa previa under this first one is velamentous insertion of umbilical cord normally the umbilical cord is attached with the center of the placenta but in this case the umbilical cord is attached with the fetal membranes as you can see in this diagram this is the diagram of velamentous insertion of the umbilical cord these are fetal blood vessels this is the umbilical cord and you can see the fetal blood vessels are attached with the placenta but the umbilical cord is attached with the fetal membranes so that's why this is one of the risk factor of the vasa previa next is multi lobed placenta in this the placenta is separated into two lobes as you can see there are two lobes and both the lobes are connected with each other by fetal blood vessels and this is the diagram of bilobed placenta and when the placenta is separated into more than two lobes that is known as multi lobed placenta and this is also one of the risk factor of the vasa previa next is ivf that is in vitro fertilization this is the process of artificial fertilization in this case there are the chances of abnormal placentation or the abnormal attachment of the placenta that's why there are the chances of vasa previa next is placenta previa in this the placenta is attached at the lower uterine segment this is also one of the risk factor of vasa previa next is multiple pregnancies as in the case of twins or the triplets there are there is no enough space available in the upper uterine segment so there are the chances of placement or the implantation of the placenta at the lower uterine segment and that is also one of the risk factor of the vasa previa next is the pathophysiology of the vasa previa due to the et various etiological factors or due to the various risk factors the blood vessels are present at the membranes without protection as you can see here the blood vessels are present without the watson jelly which actually protects the blood vessels from the rupture and during labor when the membranes rupture that will cause the damage to the fetal vessels and when the fetal vessels damage or ruptured that will leads to fetal exsanguination what is fetal exsanguination when there is a severe loss of blood occurs which also causes the death that is known as fetal exsanguination and in the case of vasa previa there is a high fetal mortality that is 50 to 70% Next are the diagnosis of vasa previa under this there is one very important thing to know that when the fetal blood vessels are ruptured or damaged the blood loss is always fetal as in the case of placenta previa or in the case of a rupture placenta the blood loss is maternal but in this case in the case of vasa previa the blood loss is fetal here is the classic triad what is triad that is the group of 3 so here the group of 3 signs are present which helps to diagnose the condition 
फर्स्ट वन इज मेम्ब्रेन रपचर एज वी नो दैट फीटल ब्लड वेसल्स आर प्रेजेंट एट द मेम्ब्रेन्स एंड इफ द मेम्ब्रेन्स आर रपचर इट विल कॉज डैमेज टू द फीटल वेसल्स एंड एज अ रिजल्ट पेनलेस वेजाइनल ब्लीडिंग अकर्स एंड वेन देर इज अ वेजाइनल ब्लीडिंग देर इज डिक्रीज ब्लड सप्लाई टू द फीटस एंड एज अ रिजल्ट फीटल प्रेडिकार्डिया और द फीटल डेथ अकर्स अंडर डायग्नोसिस फर्स्ट वन इज कलर फ्लो डॉप्टर अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी विच इज डन टू डायग्नोज द कंडीशन सेकेंड वन इज सिंगर्स एल्कलाई डी नेचुरेशन टेस्ट विच इज परफॉर्म फॉर द डिटेक्शन ऑफ द न्यूक्लेटेड आर बी सीज और द फीटल एच बी If there is a vaginal bleeding this test is basically performed to check the fetal blood cells and if the fetal blood cells are present that means the blood loss is fetal and it is clear that the cause behind that blood loss is vasa previa but if the fetal blood cells are not present it means the blood loss is maternal and it is clear that the cause behind that blood loss is either placenta previa or abruptio placenta next are the complications of the vasa previa under this a woman in labor as when there is a uterine contractions it will cause the cervical dilatation fetal blood vessels at cervix fetal blood vessels are present over the internal os of the cervix so when there is a uterine contractions the presenting part might puts pressure over the fetal blood vessels and that might compresses the fetal blood vessels and when the fetal blood vessels are compressed there will be decreased blood supply to the fetus as a result fetal heart rate is decreased or when the cervix is dilated there are the chances that these fetal blood vessels might ruptured and that will cause the blood loss and that blood loss is fetal and as a result there is a decreased blood supply to the fetus and fetus may be die as you can see there is a three possibilities that if the fetal blood vessels rupture then there is a rapid blood loss which is fetal and there is a decreased blood supply to the fetus and fetus may die stillborn baby or intrauterine death of the baby might occurs but if the fetal blood vessels are compressed then there is a decreased blood supply to the fetus and as a result fetal bradycardia occurs or there is a th third possibility that the fetal blood vessels may not rupture or may not be affected next is the management of the vasa previa under this the management depends on fetal gestational age that whether the gestational age is 37 weeks or not next is check the severity of the condition that whether the fetal blood vessels are compressed or ruptured or how much there is a vaginal bleeding next is the persistence or the reoccurrence of the bleeding that whether the bleeding is occur on the continuous basis or on the repeated basis next is presumed cause of bleeding that supposing the cause of bleeding if the pregnancy is more more than or equal to 37 weeks and the bleeding is occurring on the repeated basis then the delivery is recommended and the mode of the delivery only depends on the state of the fetus and if the condition is under control then the vaginal delivery should be done by the expert hands but if the condition is not under control if the bleeding is occur on the repeated basis or on the continuous basis then the cesarean section should be done if the pregnancy is less than 37 weeks then the expectant management can be done in the selected cases only for the fetal maturity with selected cases in which the vaginal bleeding is controlled in that case fetal monitoring should be carefully done that is the fetal heart sound should be regularly monitored so as to check the fetal bradycardia if there is a fetal bradycardia it indicates that there is a decreased blood supply to the fetus which might also cause the fetal death so immediate measure should be taken next is new natal blood transfusion may be needed as the blood loss is fetal so in the case of huge blood loss there, there is a need of blood transfusion and if the bleeding is continue to occur then the steroid therapy should be given for the maturation of the lungs and then the delivery should be conducted 
that's all about the management of the vasa previa my dear students i hope you all are clear with this topic but still if you have any kind of query then please ask me in the comment section i will definitely answer your queries and if you find my video useful then please like the video and give your valuable comments and if you are new at my channel then please subscribe my channel